What's up guys? I'm Travis and you're watching our upgraded SCX6 Trail Honcho build series. Welcome back everyone. We're up to video number seven now of our upgraded SCX-6 Trail Honcho build series. I should actually be calling this video 6B because it's based off of our last video where we installed the Vitavon axles on here. limited slip and it's called that for a reason because it does slip when you get in a bind well today just like I told you guys in the last part of the last videos we will be installing lockers Vitavon lockers or spools whatever you want to call them into these axles along with a 1338 overdrive gear set so that's what's coming up guys and for all you guys who really liked the limited slip the option you thought it was great but you don't want it to slip as easy I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you a little trick I got that I tried and it worked. We're gonna lock these up without a locker. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the spool out of this bag here and we're gonna bolt the ring on and then I'm gonna get a weight on these and we're gonna get a weight on the limited slip diff that we had in there before so I can subtract this from our ongoing total and add this in. We'll start with our limited slip that we're removing. And guys, I'm going to go ahead and weigh the limited slip with the ring and pinion installed and also the bearings installed as well. So right here, we're getting 140. Okay, that's an easy number. Let me write that down. All right, now let's see what the Vitavon locker or spool is with the bearings. I, once again, I put the bearings front and rear and we've got the ring and pinion on there as well. That is coming up to 119.2. So if we just went ahead and called that 120 to make it easy, the tents aren't really gonna matter a whole bunch. That is exactly 20 grams difference in the weight between the limited slip and the locker. So if you double that, because we're doing two axles, there's 40 grams difference that I will be removing or subtracting from our grand total. Now you could, if you want to save money, I'm here to tell you guys, I tested it out. You could put the same spool locker that you have in your stock SCX6 right now with the same ring and pinion and the same bearings. They will fit, okay? There's no problem there at all. Even if you're gonna use the Vitavon HD number 45 hardened axle shafts, they do fit inside of the stock spool. Just so you guys know, you can just take it right out of yours and put it right in here, no problems at all. Now, if you guys have been following me, you'll probably notice that this diff cover is a different color purple than it was in the last two videos. I've tried three times, and I think I finally found the color purple that matches these Vision wheels. I mean, it looks pretty close. By the way, this is called Icy Purple. I think it worked out really good. It's made by Krylon. Now, I know I could have just went and had these anodized purple to the same color, and everything would be awesome. But the problem with that is these are going to get all scratched up because I wheel pretty hard and I want to keep these looking good. So I want to be able to just take spray paint and paint right back over them. That way I get the same look again with no problems. So anyway, guys, to do this, go ahead and remove this diff cover here. On the back side of this diff cover, you have four Allens. There's one in each corner here in the back. Go ahead and take those out and take this off. Other than that, right here, you've got a pin that goes into your hex hub, go ahead and remove that pin and you can slide your hex hub off. And then there are four Allens right here. One, two, three, four. This is what holds the bearings into this side of the axle. 
Other than that, you've only got one more thing. It's going to be your drive shaft. Go ahead and take the pin out of your drive shaft and remove that from your pinion. There you go. And then we're gonna pull these axle shafts out left and right. Now guys, this is a CNC machined aluminum axle housing. The bearings that are right here are really, really tight inside. So it's gonna seem like they're really hard or you're missing something else. Your axle shafts just aren't coming out. I'm here to tell you that's all you have to do. You just gotta pull really hard. So one of the tricks I like to use is I'll take an Allen driver here and I'll stick it through the hole where the hex hub pin goes and just pull it straight out. Okay, that one wasn't that bad. This side over here has given me some problems in the past. It's really, really tight. So we'll do the same thing, and I'm gonna square up and get some leverage here and pull straight out. That side was quite a bit harder to get out. But anyway, that's all it is. Now, our diff case set here will just pull right out with the bearings, just like that, no big deal at all. And then we're gonna go ahead and push our pinion through here because our drive shaft's disconnected. Now we can go ahead and put our pinion in here from our overdrive. And it's going to push right back through that bearing just like that. And we went ahead and installed the ring, in, the, the ring onto our spool here. So we can just drop this in next. And guys, I would recommend that all of these Allens right here that are holding your ring on, go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on those. You don't want this coming loose while it's inside of your Axle housing will cause all kinds of problems if one of the little, ax one of the little allens is floating around there. So put our bearing back on there. So we'll just stick that back in there. Everything fits just great. Now we'll go ahead and take our axle shafts and slide them back through. Gently slide them through the hole. It's going to be a little bit tight because that bearing's so tight, just like we were taking it out. You want to get this in as far as you can and then hold the locker spool and push in on the axle shaft. That's what's gonna push this end here into the spool. It's gonna line it up. So you get it all back in, get it where you want it, and then we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other side here. Go through, line it up, push the axle in, and push the bearings back in. That's it, guys. It's really not that big of a deal. It, it, this is a pretty easy upgrade, to be honest with you. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some Banquish Blue Gear Rock Lube on here, just like we had all over our limited slip diff here. We're gonna, I love that stuff. I'll show you what I'm doing here, and I will leave a link to that in the description, as well as all of these parts, everything I'm using here, we're gonna leave a link in the description. And if you hang on just a little bit longer, I will show you, like I said, how to take this limited slip and almost completely lock it up, at least 90% anyway. Little trick I got, so stay tuned for that. Okay guys, so I have got all of the Allens on the ends tightened up. I've got my hex hubs on here. I did leave the drive shaft off just so that I can turn this and grease my ring and pinion without the drive shaft being on there. That's gonna make it difficult to do. So tighten everything else up. And by the way, I did use Loctite on every single one of these Allens, the pin for the hex hubs. I'm gonna use it on the Allens for my diff cover. Everything gets Loctite. It just seems to work out really good. You don't want nothing coming apart. Now when I'm greasing this up, I like to just take and put a little bit of grease on a small paintbrush, and then just go ahead and work that grease down inside these spiral cut gears. Get it right down in the teeth and make sure you go all the way around. Now they say when you're using this Vanquish Blue Gear Rock Lube right here, this is the cover for it. Like I said, I'll leave it in the description for you guys. When you're using this, you only need a pea size amount of grease to do this job. I'm sorry, I've always used more than that. I don't care. Grease doesn't hurt anything at all. All parts that move like to be lubricated and this stuff is amazing. It works really good. So just go ahead and act like you're painting it and just pack it down inside them teeth there till you feel like you got enough and you can spin it. And you see how all these little strings just come off of here? I mean, this stuff is just awesome, guys. You've heard me talk about it before, but I really love this grease. 
I use it in everything. Okay guys, so we got our drive shaft back on there. We got our diff cover back on there. It turns really free. Everything is great. And we have put Loctite on all of the Allens. Now one more little trick I'd like to show you before we put this back together. If you guys are having a problem with this nut right here that holds your wheel and tire on coming loose like I do, it's because this nylon in here is worn out. You've had it on and off too many times. A simple little trick, quick fix for that, just go ahead and put a little bit of Loctite on your axle right there on the end. That will keep this nut from coming off. It'll also keep rust off of your axle shaft and it'll make it easier to get off, guys. Okay, so that takes care of the rear axle. Now, I went ahead and did the front axle prior to this video so I'd know exactly what was going on and how to explain everything to you. And I figured if I showed you what was going on in the rear axle, I get a better camera angle, better view for you guys so you can really see what's going on. But don't worry, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna walk you through the front axle right now real quick, it'll just take a second. Everything is almost exactly the same. You just got a couple differences, let me show you. So on your front axle here, you do not have the four Allens on the end of the axle holding that bearing in that was really tight to get in and out. So instead of that, we've got kingpins on the bottom and top of the steering knuckle that will have to be removed. Obviously, you have to remove your tire and you have to remove your hex hub, same as last time. And then you're going to also have to go ahead and remove this Allen right here that holds on your steering link on the top and this tie rod here. You'll have to do that on both sides. Then you can remove the tie rod and the steering link after your tire and hex hub are off and you've got the two Allens out for the steering knuckles. Everything is exactly the same other than that, guys. Your axles will just slide right out again. And you, on this side, you'll have one side that's a long axle and one side that's a short axle shaft. So no big deal. That is the only difference. Everything else is exactly the same. So now that we've got our axles all wrapped up, I'm going to go ahead and take this limited slip diff case set and I'm going to show you guys what I did to get it to slip a little bit less. We're going to go ahead and take this apart so I can show you what's inside and what's going on. And then I'll show you my little trick, what I did to get this to resemble a little bit more of a locker, so to speak. Now, once you get all your Allens out, now you can go ahead and remove this ring gear by popping it right off. And you'll notice there's a bunch of messy goo inside here. I believe that the fluid they're using in here is 150,000 weight or 125,000 weight. Uh, they're using one in the front and one in the rear. I don't know which it is, but I know one's 150 and one's 125. So, I mean, it's got some pretty good consistency to it. You can see how thick it is and how stringy it is. So inside here, guys, if you use a little pick or something, you can go ahead and remove your spider gears along with the pin that's holding them in there. They're a little bit difficult to get out. It's really slick and they're in there really tight. There we go. Okay, so now we went ahead and pulled out our spider gears with the pin and it's got these retainers on either side. You've got another set in there as well. Go ahead and pull that set out as also and then I want you to go ahead and clean all of this up. Get rid of all of this 150,000 weight fluid take it all off, make sure everything's clean and dry, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're getting rid of the 150,000 weight and we're putting in 20 million weight fluid. That's right, I never thought I'd see a day when somebody was making 20 million weight diff fluid, but here it is. It's made specifically for the differentials in my E-Revo as well as some other cars. Let me show you what it looks like here. It's really thick. It's kind of like bubble gum, it's clear. And I mean, you could take a screwdriver and look at this. It doesn't even really go in, it just kind of bounces off of it. So you gotta take and really dig, dig a piece out of there. And I mean, it's just like, just like bubble gum, the consistency. I mean, it doesn't even make my fingers dirty. It doesn't stick to my fingers at all. So all we're doing is taking that and we're replacing the diff fluid with that. We're just packing it in here. 
and I mean really pack it in there, guys. Take yourself a chunk and put it in there and just work that in. Push it down in the gears. Make sure you get everything completely coated. You can turn your gears around a little bit. Make sure they're in the bottom as well and just pack this as tight as you can possibly get it. So that now your spider gears are gonna have a harder time turning with the 20 million weight fluid as opposed to the 150,000 weight fluid. It's just common sense, right guys? That's all you have to do. And then go ahead and put your cover back on, or your ring, I'm sorry, put your ring gear back on and tighten it down. That's it. Now you'll notice when you're tightening this down because you packed it so tight, these holes right here are going to have some of that fluid stuck in them. You're gonna to wanna to take a pick and just try to stick it in there or maybe a toothpick and get as much of this out of these holes as you can. If you put your Allens in here with this 20 million weight fluid in there and tighten it down and it's not going down and you force to go even tighter, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna split this aluminum casing right here. I've seen people do it before. It's not a good idea. So make sure that all the fluid is cleaned out of these holes before you really torque on that Allen. So that little trick is for all you guys that love your limited slip. I mean, it, they turn better, they go down the trail better, it just works really, really good. And maybe you love your slip to death, but it just slips a little bit too easy if you're on the rocks. So that will help out a lot. Now it will still slip, okay? This is not going to lock it up solid. I'd say it's about 90%. So it'll help you out and resemble a little bit more of a locker. You kind of got the best of both worlds there because if you do get bound up on a rock, it's going to slip and save all of your drive train. Whereas the lockers that we put in it today, guys, if you get in a bind and you don't back off the throttle, you're going to have problems. You're going to strip out your spur gear or something on the drive train, just so you know. Now, a lot of people will put an overdrive gear in the front and leave the stock gear in the rear so that your front tires are turning faster than the rear. And this will help you dig and claw and work your way up some hills and get over obstacles while the rear tires are spinning slower and they're kind of a foundation just keeping you there supported. This will also help when you're going up a steep hill and your, back, your, your truck wants to flip over backwards. If all your tires are spinning at the same speed, it's easier to do than if the rear tires are spinning at a slower speed. Now, all the other vehicles I've done, I've showed you guys the overdrives and stuff in, that's how we do it. We put the overdrive in the front and leave the rear alone. Due to Vitavon not having a stock gear set, um, I had to do it in the rear as well. So we have a 1338 in the front and a 1338 in the rear. Now, as soon as those come off a of back order from Vitavon, I will get the 1243 and throw it in the rear. But I thought, why not, guys? Let's run overdrive front and rear. Let's see how this is going to work. Let's see if it does tip over still. I'm sure it will. But it's definitely going to give us a little bit more wheel speed and help us get over some obstacles easier. Then when the other one comes in, I'll throw it in the rear and we'll go try that one out too. I'll let you guys know what I think of this, but for right now, it was a pretty simple upgrade and I've got it locked up again. The limited slip's great, but it's just not for me. I like extreme rock crawling. This thing's on its lid just as much as it's on its tires. Um, I know you, some of you guys don't want to tear your rig up, but this thing is for me to show you guys what it does. And I'll tell you what, I work this thing to death. I work it hard. I climb hard, I play hard. We break parts, we replace them with better parts. 
And that's why I'm here. I want to get every part I can possibly get for this thing, show you guys how to put it in here, and show you what the results are so you can see if you want one or not. <laughs> now besides this, guys, we are not done upgrading this truck yet. I have got all kinds of stuff still. We're working our way up. We started with a strong foundation. Now we're working our way up. I've got shocks for this from Vitavon. I've got all the links from Vitavon. I've got links from Samix. I've got links from Tareel. We're gonna try all of them and see which one works the best. I've also got, uh, I just picked up a brand new Castle Mamba X 8S ESC. So that should be interesting. We will be running this on 6S and 8S as well. Uh, down the trail a little bit further, guys, we're trying to beef everything up before we add power to it. Because when you add power to stuff, you always break stuff. So we're trying to prevent that. Anyway, guys, uh, I think that's going to wrap up this video. You guys go play, go crash, go bash, go do whatever it is that makes you happy. Because that's what life is about. Be happy all the time. Guys, I am Travis. You're watching Upgraded RC. Until our next video, which is just right around the corner, peace out!